Lisa Gansky, uh, internet veteran, now an author. You've written a book, The Mesh, Why the Future of Business is Sharing. You founded the first commercial internet company in 1993. You sold it to AOL in 1995. Let's be a little science fictional here, Lisa. Let's cast our mind forward to say 2025, 20, 2030, 2040. What is the future? Are we entering a period where everything becomes social? Is technology changing the very nature of 21st century life? Hmm. Well, of course technology has changed the, the many centuries that it's already shaped our lives, whether it's you know, cars and transportation or power, energy being distributed. And, and so the internet, I think it's the, the cycles are shrinking. Um, and that and the innovations are coming out more rapidly. Um, I think that I also, before I forget, and we all get in trouble, I just want to say the GNN um, founding was with Tim O'Reilly and Dale Doherty. So uh, I wasn't really the founder. I had accomplices who uh, have gone on to do fab yeah. fabulous things. Not as fabulous as you, though. Well, that's their problem. But <laughs> in any case, I think that... Um, there's an, we, we tend to correct and overcorrect, and I think that one of the things that happen is, the, you know, I say the internet, the, the web is getting physical with, with these um, mobile devices and, and things like Foursquare where people are checking in, and then we're starting to see things uh, like Groupon that's driving people to physical locations in their neighborhood or to meet other people in their town. And so I think that the web is getting physical in a, in a, genuinely, in a genuine way and in a community right. way. Right, so uh, Mark Davis, the ex-chief uh, scientist at Yahoo, said that, it, that the internet is becoming the central nervous system of society. Clay Shirky also mm. has a nice phrase about this. Is that really what you're saying, is that the internet is becoming the thing in itself in our lives? Um, I that think it's that not second life anymore, that it's first life. I think that, the, that um, I don't think it it's perceived by people as the internet when it starts to be something that's plugged into your car that's mm. giving you directions or that says, you know, oh crap, the restaurant you were trying to get into is, you know, two hours late serving table that was whatever. Should we make other reservations for you? Here's two choices. You know, I think it's a, um, it starts to be um, a tool that stops being the internet at some point and starts to be what your you know brands that you're loyal to or something that you that you trust in a plug and play way so if we go into a hotel room and you know there's an app on the phone that lets you make the reservation and you you just walk into the hotel and unlock the hotel door with your phone and you plug it into something and your music is there and your call schedules there and it's you know reminding you to charge whatever whatever other stuff you need um, maybe it's made reservations automatically. I mean, there's a bunch of things if we think about uh, the technology that we've had in the industry and that it hasn't really been packaged in a way for, you know, for people, for, for normal people. I think it's really, we're taking a lot of tools that we here in Silicon Valley who tend to, you know, talk to ourselves and are can very far ahead of what most of um, the rest of humanity can kind of digest. I think we're in a place now where all the, all the puzzle pieces are out and people are going to put together and start testing some really interesting things. I think it will stop looking so geeky and start feeling a little more warm. Any worries about that warmth? Is it <laughs> going to become too warm? Is this little device which you're saying will open hotel rooms for me, know everything I want, all my desires? Not worried at all about that? I'm worried a lot about that, but I, I, again, like that's the overcorrection thing. You know, I think that we have been uh, connected to the internet, searching and doing, playing and doing a bunch of things. Now it's become social. Now it's becoming physical, and we we tend to to take things to an extreme. I'm waiting to see, and I'm hoping that the mesh is about. Um, coming, bringing things into balance where we're still using the technology but we're connected to our communities, we're connected to our family, we're connected, we make decisions about like holy crap, how, why do I, like I have seven bicycles, 
Seven? I thought you were into sharing. Well, I am now. I'm giving. I'm putting them into a program, and uh, <laughs> I'm keeping one because I really. I mean, need it's to. like you're putting them into an orphanage. Or yeah, like yeah. A bicycle orphanage. Yeah, a little, so, little special Why program. Why just seven in the first place? Don't. It's the long story, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous, right? Because people would come and visit, and I would decided that it's just stupid, you know, and or I just didn't get rid of one because I thought I will use this one for whatever. It's just ridiculous, and I have tools I don't know how to use, and I. The, the mesh was, you know, I could have, t I could have written the book by out from a photo of my garage. So, I think, you know, my feeling is it's about finding the balance, and, we're, you know, I think that it will be different for different individuals. For for my nephew who doesn't own anything, it's very the mesh is very sexy. So, speaking about sexiness, Lisa, and one word answer here: by 2025, 2030, will we have found the balance? Is the internet going to solve most of these big problems? One oh, I don't, I don't think the internet is going to solve anything. I think we are going to ourselves find the balance. And yes, we better because there's consequences if we don't. And I, I think that the mesh, what I really like about it and what sold me on it, and this is more than one word, is that um, it is kind of on tap so we can decide which things we actually want to own and which things we feel comfortable in our, with our relationship with a company or like you, you still buy your DVDs, many of us use Netflix or you know, Zipcar or whatever the thing is. And, but if you really want something and it's important to you, you make that decision and you keep it. That's your thing, who cares? This is about the web getting personal. This is about starting to really decide what you care about and what, what, you, ha what you value and what you don't. And if you value your time with your friends and all this stuff, owning all this stuff and making all the money to pay for the stuff takes a lot of time.